Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. What a privilege it is to stand before you for the second day of uh, last night, whenever you will be uh, doing this. Yesterday, we came from the word of the Lord uh, out of the book of Daniel, chapter 3. And the Lord gave us a proper uh, perspective on the word, which was to be unshakable. Not only did he tell us to be unshakable, but he also said we were to embrace from impact coming from Daniel chapter three, where we saw three individuals, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, praise our God. And we learned that in the process of impacting others, I ourselves uh, will be impacted. We did not expect to reach uh, individuals and be successful in reaching other individuals and uh, helping souls be saved without our lives being affected. And so that's what we are. Tonight, we're going to come from a teaching perspective. If you would uh, dwell with me for just a few seconds of your time, a few minutes rather, I'm not going to be long tonight. I just want to talk to you guys um, for a few minutes from the Word of the Lord. And if this this area is an area that, uh, I'll tell you what I do. Okay. This area is an area that is very uh, special to me. I believe I Lay the word of the Lord on the communion table. Praise God. And uh, it is his word that he gives us. Uh, but I just want to give a talk to you guys. This area that I want to I want to talk to you guys about tonight, we're, we're not going to take a long time, is simply the area that the Lord has had uh, me in for about a year now concerning this year, really this season uh, for the people that I lead and that I am responsible for, that I'm privileged to serve uh, in the aspect of leaders and preachers and really the body of Christ at large. And that is that God said concerning this year and really for this season that supersedes this year is that he wants his people to dominate. Dominate, brothers and sisters, is simply to reign or rule. Praise God, and I trust that you guys can hear me uh, well. It's simply to reign or rule. Praise God. So in the book of Genesis, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 1, and, and, and for those that's been following me, uh, we're saving nation, you know where we're coming from. Again, we want to thank God for the pastor, uh, pastor at the Kenya Church in Kenya, and whom we're privileged to share in this uh, convocation this year, 2020. What a privilege it is. Thank you again. Praise God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. God says, let us make man in our image out of our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Brothers and sisters, in that text, he's talking about the creation of man. Uh, let's, let's first go back and understand who's talking. God, the creator, God the Father is talking to himself, who we know as the word of God. When he says, let us, he's talking about, he's talking to himself, which is the word of God, who we know as Jesus Christ. Let's go to John chapter 1. The Bible says that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. That's talking about the beginning of time and the beginning of, of creation. But not also, um, but also I should say, uh, it's talking about the book of beginnings, which is Genesis. When he's saying, let us make man of our image, he's talking about himself, who is the word who is Jesus Christ in the flesh. John lets us know that in chapter 1 of John, verse 12, the Bible says that the word, talking about Jesus Christ, was made flesh and dwelt among us. Praise God. And so he creates mankind in his image and after his likeness. In other words, God perceived the thing in his mind, how he wanted us to be, how he wanted our makeup to be, and he created us as such. In other words, when he saw you, he put the singing abilities in you. He put the creative abilities in you, the problem solving ability. 
abilities uh, in you. He put the artistic abilities in you. He gave you a rap. He gave you a song. He gave you rhythm. He put music in your fingers. He put music in your mind because that's how he saw you. And if he saw you with those different things, therefore he created you with those things. In his image, how he viewed you. Praise God. But also in his likeness. We're created not only in his image, but he creates us in his likeness. In other words, when we were created, we were created like God. Hallelujah. And, and we know uh, just by being simple believers, we know that God is creator, therefore he is ultimate ruler. And as he rules in heaven, God intended for his people to rule in the earth. Everybody that's watching me, would you look at somebody from about six feet away from you and say, reign and rule. Don't it. That's all it is. It's to reign and to rule. Praise God. And uh, I really don't need all of this sound. I, I normally use all of this sound when we are tuning up, but I just want to talk to you guys tonight. So, reign and rule. That's, that's all it is in simplicity, what dominate is. God intended for his people to reign and rule in the earth as he reigned and ruled in heaven. Praise God. You don't believe me, so let's just go to the New Testament where his uh, Jesus' disciples are talking to him. And they say, Master, teach us to pray. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that Jesus said to pray in this manner. Our Father which art in heaven. He begins to go latter part of that. He says, uh, Hallelujah. Uh, thy kingdom come, thank you Jesus, uh, thy will be done in earth, praise God. It's amazing to me that we emphasize in earth because for a long time I misquoted, and I know some of you have, you misquoted the scripture and you said on earth, praise God, you're talking about the green grass and the blue waters. But he's not talking about that primarily, he says in earth, praise God. He's talking about the body of man. Hallelujah. And so he says, thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, in the body of man, in the life of man. Let the will of God be done in earth, in our lives, as it is in heaven. So as God reigns and rules in the heaven, his intention for his creation is to reign and rule in the earth. And so because he's capital K-I-N-G, we are supposed to be capital lowercase I-N-G. He, so he's king of kings and he's capital l-o-r-d and so we as his children should be capital uh, excuse me lowercase l-o-r-d-s as he's king of kings we are supposed to be the lowercase king as he's lord capital lord we are supposed to be the little lords we are like our creator i pray this is making sense uh to you thus far Praise God. And I'm going to pick this up so that I'm not straining my voice and I have a voice tomorrow. So as he as he as he reigns and rules in heaven as creation, as excuse me, as creator, we as creation should reign and rule in the earth. Hallelujah. So when he makes Adam, he makes Adam with the abilities to reign and rule in the earth. In other words, everything that Adam needed to succeed in the earth, God already put in him. And see, that's the problem. You're seeking for uh, things from other people and validation from other people to be able to reign and rule in the earth. And God said, everything that you need to be successful, I've already placed in you. He's already placed the business in you. He's already placed the idea in you. He's already placed the concept in you. Hallelujah. Praise God for the four year education, but God forbid if you can't get it, you already have everything you need to succeed. I wish we were in uh, service tonight. I would tell you to look at somebody and tell them that you have everything you need. Hallelujah. To succeed. Praise our God. And so he puts in Adam what Adam needs to reign and rule. And so if we read on, we find out that although Adam was given the ability to reign and rule, and God put him over all of the things, all the fish in the sea, all the fowl in the air, and everything that creeped on the earth, hallelujah, we begin to read and we find out that Adam relinquished his authority, hallelujah, by way of disobedience. God left them instructions, and I'm going to pause there, I'm going to pause there, because a lot of us, we want to be anointed, we want to be a part of it, we want to have position, but we don't want to follow instruction. 
God gives position with a set of instructions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gives positioning with a set of instructions. Lord, I wish somebody was receiving this in the media land right now. Praise God. He gives him position with instructions. He gives him what to do and what not to do. Praise God. In other words, he gives Adam responsibility. He says stress and keep. He also gives them uh, responsibility and gives them the do and do not by saying that tree of the garden of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat of it. Praise God. The Bible lets us know as we begin to read, and we're still talking about dominating here, reigning and ruling in the earth. Praise God. Hallelujah. As we begin to read, we find out that there's a serpent who also heard the word of God to Adam and Eve. Praise God. And he comes to Eve. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I'm going to say, the Bible says, you'll find this in chapter 1, chapter 2, and really chapter 3. Also, we begin to read, praise God. We find out that the Bible describes this, this individual, it describes this being as being more, the most subtle uh, being on the earth. In other words, the most tricky, the, one of the most intelligent, praise God. And so, uh, I want to pause here too. Because a lot of times we kind of uh, knock Satan in the way of saying, oh, he's not intelligent and the kingdom of darkness doesn't have any power. But in reality, that's not true. Praise God. Just as we were created in the image and likeness of God, Satan also was created by God. And when he got kicked out of heaven, he was never really stripped of his abilities and things. So he's very intelligent because his creator is intelligent. Praise God. And so we find out that this intelligent being, praise God, he was really only stupid in the area of being kicked out of heaven. But besides that, he's an intelligent being. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the kingdom of darkness is very intelligent. You don't find the kingdom of darkness and demons and devils working against each other. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's intelligent right there. Lord, have your way tonight. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, that, that this being that is more subtle than any other being, praise God, gets to Eve, and I'm paraphrasing church, gets to Eve and says to Eve that the creator didn't necessarily say that you couldn't eat of that tree, eat of that tree, praise God. You should not surely die. Here's our problems, brothers and sisters. We can have a clear word from God and still entertain people who don't hear God. I praise your name. Hallelujah. They may hear God, but they don't hear God concerning your life and your vision and what God has left you in charge. Praise God. And that's the problem. God has left you with responsibility and he has left you with instructions. Uh, but instead of following God's instructions, you're listening to so-and-so and what so-and-so said and what so-and-so thinks. God didn't leave them instructions. He left you instructions. Uh, and I was reminded about the fact that there would be times where my mother would leave me at the house, praise God, with a little brother, and she would leave instructions with me. Praise God. And if I went different from the instructions, there was repercussions. Uh, praise God. Uh, the moment I thought, you said no. No, 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 no. You heard what I said. You knew the instructions and you did opposite. And so, brothers and sisters, they heard God. They heard what God said. God said, the day that you eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. So the other thing teaches us that that death there is a physical death, but it's not only a physical death, brothers and sisters, and I pray I'm not going too fast for you, but it is a spiritual disconnection from God. They were disconnected from God. They died spiritually. There's some people under the sound of my voice because of your continued disobedience. It has caused you to die spiritually. You used to hear from God. You used to have prophetic orders from God, but you don't hear from God like you used to hear from God because of your disobedience. You missed God. And therefore, your relationship with God has not died. Hallelujah. God. Praise God. And so I'm trying not to preach tonight, but I'm rather trying to preach and present dominating to you. Brothers and sisters, when you effectively dominate, you effectively carry out and hallelujah, the instructions from God in the earth. Praise God. You 
carry out his will and his way in the earth. Hallelujah. You don't determine what God said, but rather you do what God said. And so the moment that Adam and Eve went opposite of what God said, uh, they relinquished their ability to reign and rule in the earth. Uh, Lord, I praise your name. I'm closing in just a second. I really am. I really am. I really am. Hallelujah. But I want to tell somebody, if you're going to reign, if you're going to rule, you've got to follow God's instructions. So, praise God. And so the enemy, I believe the enemy wanted to mess it up for them because he messed himself up. And so that's the problem nowadays. The enemy is trying to keep you from reigning and ruling in the earth because he once had a position, a high position, now, but he no longer holds that position in heaven. So he's trying to get you to miss your place in God. He's trying to get you to mess up your place. He doesn't want to see you, praise God, in the right place where God wants you to be. And that is in the place where you rule and you reign and you operate in what God wants you to operate in. Praise our God. And so, so he, he, Adam, he, Relinquish their authority, brothers and sisters. They relinquish their authority. Praise God. God gives authority to man. Man relinquishes authority by way of disobedience. If you want to be replaced, hallelujah, in the kingdom of God, be disobedient. This is a right now word we're going right now, people. If you want to be replaced and you want your position to be filled quickly, be disobedient. Do, do the opposite of what God said. Hallelujah. Praise God. So God gives man authority, man relinquishes his authority by not obeying what God said. Praise God. Hallelujah. One of the reasons, brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm wrapping this up. One of the reasons why I believe they relinquish their authority is because. You will relinquish something that you really don't know. If you really don't know who you are in God, you will just allow anybody to tell you who you are. And so that's why it's imperative to know who you are in God. I want to go back in a little bit, and I want to say, know who you are first. And the only way you're going to know who you are is when you come into the realization of who God is because I just said that we were created in the image and likeness of God. So in order to really know who I am, I can't go to a psychiatrist, I can't ask my mother, I can't ask my father without seeking God. I have to know who God is, in other words, uh, in order to learn who I am. Praise God. And so know who I am first, but also know who I am in God. And brothers and sisters, when you know who you are and know who you are in God, you can't allow anybody to tell you different from what you know. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so they relinquished authority because they really didn't know who they were. They allowed an old snake, an old serpent, as we say. Praise God. As the KG, KG, KG he says, an old serpent, praise God, to tell them what God said. Hallelujah. And that's the problem. When God gives you a word, you can't allow anybody to get in your ear and tell you different from what God has told you. If he told you the house is yours, then the house is yours. Praise God. Hallelujah. He told you your marriage was coming together, brothers and sisters, by any and all means. Your marriage is coming together. If he told you that the church, hallelujah, was going to grow, praise God right there in Kenya, Africa. Praise God. And brothers and sisters, you may not see the funding. You may not know where the money is coming from. You may not know where the people is coming from. But if God gave you a word, then it will come to pass. Would you look at somebody right there in Kenya, Africa, and tell them, say, oh neighbor, oh neighbor, oh neighbor. Even if you have to post it on Facebook, say, brother, my brother, my brother, my brother, my sister, if God gave you a word, then his word will come to pass. Stop questioning God's word. 
Hallelujah. Stop questioning God's word concerning your life. God gave you a sure word. He said it was going to happen. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. Tell somebody any day now, I'm expecting for God to do just what he said. Any day now, I'm expecting, praise God. Hallelujah. For souls to be saved. Hallelujah. Any day now, I'm expecting people to be delivered from homosexuality and lesbianism. Any day now, I'm expecting my city to turn around. Uh, in the day now, I'm expecting my family to get saved. Uh, in the day now, praise God. Uh, I'm expecting to see marriages grow and come together. Uh, in the day now, I'm expecting families uh, that were broken to come back together. Uh, in the day now, I'm expecting God to do what He said. Uh, brothers and sisters, what you do, you do. Uh, when God said, uh, and you carry out what God said, uh, then you need God no other choice uh, than to do what He said. Hallelujah. Uh, praise God. Uh, you do what God instructed you to do. Uh, you need God no choice uh, but to do what He promised you. Uh, praise God. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, and the promises of God, uh, they are yes uh, and amen. Uh, God's word uh, cannot return back to Him more. Uh, but scripture teaches us uh, that we will accomplish that. What is it that I have to do? Tell somebody, when you do what God said, you leave him no other choice but to carry out what he told And so, and so we're going to get back on the topic. Praise God, because I got, I got excited just a little bit. Forgive me, Pastor, and, 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 my, and my Kenya brothers and sisters. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I got excited. I, I felt like dancing there. Praise God, because there's some promises that God promised me. That I'm expecting for him to do. Now, how about that? There's some things I'm expecting God to do. There's some, there's some prophetic words that I'm expecting God to carry out. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's some, there's some people I'm expecting God to see. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so any day now, I'm expecting praise our God. I'm expecting God to do it. Praise God. I'm expecting God to carry out what he said in my life. I'm expecting for those prophecies to happen. Praise God. I'm expecting for those people to be saved. Praise God. It is deep now. Praise our God. Hallelujah. And I was uh, and I was sitting there and I say I'm saying this. Praise God. And what about Romans chapter 8? And the Bible said in Romans chapter 8. It said, verse 19, for the earnest expectation for every creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. In other words, they wait. Every creature has a longing, praise God, for the manifestation of what God said. Hallelujah. Way down in your spirit, there's an earnest expectation. Way down in your soul, you expected God to do what he said. Praise God. You expected for those prophecies to happen. Praise God. Verse 22, it says, For we know that the whole creation grown up and travailed in pain together. Ha. Praise God. Ha. Hallelujah. In other words, ha. there's a looming in you. Ha. There's a void in you ha. that cannot be filled ha. until God carries out what he said in the earth. Ha. And there's somebody like me watching ha. via social media, watching via YouTube, ha. watching via Facebook. Ha. But you're not going to stop believing ha. until God does everything he said he was going to do. Ha. Praise God. Ha. You're not going to stop having faith ha, until God does everything he said he was going to do. Ha. Praise God. Ha. Well, I believe it was in Hebrews ha, when the Bible said ha, that these are not ha, in faith. Ha. In other words, when they were buried in the ground, ha, praise God, faith was still there. Ha. They died in faith. Ha. But let's go back a little bit ha, because I believe in the same book, ha, if not even in the same chapter, ha, the Bible says for the just, ha, what might be in Romans, ha, somewhere in there, ha, it says for the just, Shall live by faith. I think it might have been a moment. Praise God. So we live by faith, but it may be. Not only am I going to live by faith, but if I have to die in faith, 
Praise God, I'm going to die in faith. I'm going to die believing God for what he said concerning my life. And just standing here, I'm thinking about the old songs that the saints used to sing. They used to say, I'm a soldier. Lord, I wish I had an organ tonight. Lord, I can preach without an organ. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Praise God. And they used to say, if I die, let me die. Somebody knows it. In the army. If I die, let me die. In the army of the Lord. In other words, I'm antiquing. In other words, my hope is not necessarily to die. But because I believe God so much, if I have to die believing, I don't mind dying believing. But make sure when I die, I'm going to make sure that I'm in the army of the Lord. I'm still in faith. I'm still believing God. I'm still expecting. Praise God. And I guess I could. Right here, uh, and pick up another time. Uh, maybe tomorrow, uh, about this dominion thing. Uh, praise God. Uh, but you have to let the enemy know uh, I'm not going to stop believing God. Uh, I was trying to get away from faith tonight, church. Uh, but somehow the Lord uh, has took me back there. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, but that was prophetic yeah, just a second ago yeah, when I said I'm expecting yeah, some of you in the spirit. Yeah, the Lord has shown me yeah, that you are literally yeah, with child. Yeah, there's a prophecy in you. Yeah, and you're about to give birth. Yeah, you're with child. Yeah, praise God. Yeah, that is natural. Yeah, but in the spirit, yeah, you're about to bust. Yeah, there's a vision in you uh, that you're about to give birth to. Uh, there's a promise in you uh, that you're about to give birth to. Uh, and anything now, uh, you're about to go into labor. Uh, but if you just hold on, uh, just a little while longer, uh, your water uh, is about to break. Uh, tell somebody near you. Uh, tell somebody immediately. Uh, go ahead and snap it. Uh, Go ahead and post it on Facebook uh, that any day now uh, I'm about to give birth uh, to what's in me. Uh, I'm about to give birth uh, to that leader in me. Uh, I'm about to give birth uh, to that politician in me. Uh, I'm about to give birth uh, to that lawyer in me. Uh, I'm about to give birth uh, to that doctor in me. Uh, any day now. Any day now. Praise God. I'm about to give birth uh, to everything God put in me uh, from the very beginning, uh, from all the way in Genesis, uh, what was in my genes. Uh, I'm about to give birth to him. Uh, praise our God. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, everything in my makeup. Uh, uh, listen, listen, brothers and sisters. You have no other choice but to rule and reign because of what's in your genes. I said, you have no other choice but to reign and to rule. In other words, but to operate in the God dominion because, in other words, you have no other choice but to be great because of what's in your team. Hallelujah. If God created you, if the great, the great creator created you, brothers and sisters, then you have no other choice but to be great. You have no other choice. Whether you're ruling in the educational system, or you're ruling, praise God. And let me say this, ruling and reigning, praise God, is not necessarily having a, a, a particular position over somebody. Because I can see that somebody believes uh, that uh, part of ruling and reigning is having a position, being manager, being over somebody, being ruler, praise God. That's part of it. But that's not it in totality. Wherever you are, wherever God has place you. He's putting a dominating grace on you. He's putting certain abilities in you. Praise God. But people will have to come to you. Even if you are the boss, your boss is going to have to come to you to hear the new ideas, to hear the new 
lose our concepts. Uh, and they're not going to know it first. Uh, it won't be just like Joseph. Uh, they might sleep on you. Uh, they might lie on you first. Uh, before they perceive you to be prophetic. Uh, they might put you in the web. Uh, they might put you in the jail first. Uh, but eventually what's in you uh, is going to have to come out of you. Uh, the earnest expectation uh, is for every creature. Uh, for the manifestation uh, of the sons of God. Uh, in other words, eventually, uh, what's in you uh, is going to have to come out. It's going to have to come out. Praise God. Not just, see, 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 we got this big master where we think God just wants us to rule in the church. And God just wants us to be prophets uh, and prophetess. Uh, but what the world? Uh, what you want to do when God makes you a prophet? Uh, oh, Lord. Uh, of the educational system, uh, when God makes you the prophet, uh, praise God in the classroom, uh, when God makes you the prophet uh, in the doctor's office, uh, well, God, uh, God's intended for you uh, to move in the earth, uh, hallelujah, uh, in the same authority uh, that's in this building, uh, and in your local church, uh, God wants you to take over, uh, hallelujah, in the land, uh, and you might do it in the classroom, uh, but the same authority in the sanctuary uh, has to flow to the classroom, uh, praise God, uh, because there's a dominating grace on your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a dominating grace on your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. But you're going to, you have no other choice but to have the highest scores in your classroom because you're not just educated to teach, but you're not to teach. Praise God. Well, we're both are going to come into the, come into the surgery room and they're going to die and you're going to do everything that you are educated to do. <laughs> Excuse me, to try to bring that person back, hallelujah, but they're not going to come back until, hallelujah, you operate on what God has intended you to, and that's not just in your education, now, but when your education won't work, now, you will lay hands on that person to say, I command uh, your body to be healed, now, in the name of Jesus, now, and when medicine won't work, now, the anointing of God, now, Touch that body, uh, and when you had used the medication uh, to try to bring that person uh, back into totality, uh, and it didn't work, uh, the Lord of God will rise in you. Uh, praise God, and that body will have to be healed uh, because you're operating uh, in a dominating grace. Uh, you're ruling and reigning, uh, not just in the church, uh, but in every area uh, of your life. Uh, Praise God, uh, a dominating songwriter. Uh, it's a songwriter uh, who not only makes gospel music, uh, but plays under the anointing of God. Uh, so that the second artist here, uh, and second the radio labels, uh, hear the music. Uh, they might not understand the lyrics, uh, but the music uh, will begin to rest that soul. Uh, and souls will be saved, uh, even though they're playing your beat uh, on the secular stage. Now, the anointing of God now, from your spirit now, that flows through your head now, will take over the radio station. Now, now Indian, now, the when I'm looking now, for a song now, to get out of, now, hallelujah, they won't be able to get out now, because the anointing of God now, is going to take over. Now, I feel like shouting here now, because I really wasn't trying to go here. Now. I'm just trying to show you uh, when you operate in what God has said, uh, baby, you will take over. Uh, especially when you're not expecting uh, necessarily to blow up uh, and you're not expecting money. Uh, God is going to put you in a place to let the anointing of God on you. It's going to take over. But God, brothers and sisters, and the enemy, the enemy didn't want this word to come out. Praise God. Been trying to play with the throat. Praise our God. But so be it. God is not going to promote anybody that has the wrong motives. If you're doing things to be famous, doing things to be seen, doing things to get a check, God's not going to He's not going to give you that dominated grace. He's not going to give you that dominated grace. God will give you a grace. 
to take over. An anointing to take over. Not necessarily you taking over, but he's going to put you in a position to where the anointing of God on you, wherever you are. He's given you position to let him be. Praise God. In other words, it's not about you. It's not about you being used. It's not about you being anointed. It's about him putting you in a place to you let him in. He's giving you position. He's giving you money. If he's giving you money, he's giving you money to let him in. He's giving you money to, 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 so that you will have resources to expand ministry. If he's giving you position, he's just going to give you position because he likes you so much and he want to put you over people. If he's giving you position, he's putting you in position so that you can let him in. Wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are, let him in. There's demonized people out there, but God has sent an anointed folk. He sent an anointed group of people so that wherever you are, the anointing of God will now be the anointing of God will take over. And so now, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for speaking to us tonight. We pray that this word, hallelujah, will penetrate our hearts, change our hearts, change our minds, and we have a new outlook of life. That this is not about us. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In the earth as it is in heaven. Do it all for your glory in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, I've given you what the Lord has given me concerning this hour and concerning you. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you both now and for the rest of your life. May the grace of God, the peace of the Father rest upon you until we meet again. God bless you.